Yes, hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is the Clarets Daily News here on Turfcast. And obviously I just want to address something. Obviously I didn't upload a video yesterday. Um, I, I did get a couple of messages sort of like saying, oh, I missed a video today, pal. No, we just, I just didn't do one yesterday. Um, I wasn't feeling very well um, yesterday. So that's why I did I, I say I wasn't feeling very well. It was all completely self-inflicted. Uh, I went out watching the England match with some of the lads. Uh, had a few beers watching it. They won. Had a few beers celebrating. Then I, a band started at the pub where I was at. I had a few beers watching that. Woke up feeling like absolute horror on Monday morning. So, yeah, wasn't really up to it yesterday. So, apologies. Um, that's why we didn't have one. I bet Mark Goldbridge do not do that, does he? That's why he's got like 1.6 million subs. Um, and I don't. Um, but obviously, I appreciate you all. Um, and hopefully, uh, you understand that I was just a little bit rough. And I would not have made a good video yesterday uh, in that state. But we move on. So quite a lot to catch up with. Obviously, there was a lot from the weekend and then there's been some stuff confirmed and some more rumours coming out yesterday on Monday. First of all, it's official. Charlie Taylor is no longer a Burnley football club player. Now, we knew about this last week. I reported it on, I think it was Wednesday on Twitter and then I did the video on it the following day for the Clarets Daily News saying that he is leaving he won't be signing a new contract and he will be going to Southampton and it turns out that's exactly what happened he has officially joined Southampton so Burnley Football Club confirmed it on Monday around 5 p.m that he would be leaving and then literally seconds later Southampton put a tweet up saying that he was joining them so it's a shame that Charlie's leaving especially after left back has been a bit of a problem for us he's been here since 2017 so that's what seven years a good player, uh, not as good as what when he joined us, admittedly, but um, I, I think he's a, a very good player. I'm surprised he's got a Premier League move, if I'll be honest with you, but I think he's going there as backup, and I think it's just one last payday for Charlie, one last big payday for Charlie. He's signed a two-year deal there, I believe it was, with an option of a third for the club, so it's potentially a three-year deal, and some of the rumours flying about was that he, he rejected the new contracts at Burnley because they're only a year. I'm not sure how true that is. I just saw that flying around on Twitter rather than an actual report. But we did offer him a new deal. I know that much. He's just decided not to stay at Burnley, which is a shame, but no hard feelings from me. I, I, I like Charlie Taylor. He seems like a good lad as well. He seems like he actually cares about the club or cared, uh, probably still does to be fair. And, and, it, and it's a shame to see him leave, but it always is when one of these lads leave, obviously Tarky, Ben, me, uh, Dwight, we've all seen them leave in the last few years as well. And and these lads were part of like a really good group that we enjoyed, especially the likes of Charlie and, and Ben and Tarky, because obviously we had that amazing campaign where we finished seventh and played in Europe or attempted to play in Europe um, the following year. So yeah, it's it's sad to see Charlie go, but like I said, I, I, I wish he'd have stayed. But the fact that he's left, you know, no hard feelings from me. I know some people sometimes, you know, don't like it when a player leaves, <clears throat> excuse me, especially when they're offered a new deal. But I completely get it. If 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 Southampton are coming for him, a Premier League club, um, offering more money, you would imagine. Well, I'm one hundred percent certain they would have offered more money. Then yeah, that's fair enough. Sad to see him go. Um, but it's going to be interesting now to see what we do at left back because that leaves us with no senior left backs. I mean, the, I actually no, I guess there is Dodgson as well, isn't there? Um, I forgot about him just then. But there's obviously the rumours about the Brazilian left back coming in as well. So we'll see. Still no official name from that. Some people have started trying to work it out on Twitter. Um, but yeah, fingers crossed we get a left back in soon because that's going to be a bit of an issue if we don't. But it was an issue, uh, especially last season as well after Martson left, wasn't it? So um, yeah, sad to see Charlie leave, but I, I get it. I get it. Speaking of confirmed outgoings, Bailey Peacock Farrell has officially left Burnley as well. Now, this was announced straight after the England match when I was, I think the political way of saying this is um, slightly worse for wear. So I completely missed it. I didn't even realise until I woke up on Monday morning and even then it weren't until about, what, nine, ten o'clock till I actually saw it. So again, because I was feeling worse for wear uh, on the Monday morning still. But yeah, Bailey Peacock-Farrell, obviously not played for us for quite a while, never really been 
good enough in my opinion. You know what? I actually la- I was actually happy when we signed him. I thought he did okay at Leeds, apart from having a couple of mistakes. I thought the lad had a bright future, um, but he's just not fulfilled his potential, unfortunately. Um, there was a couple of games where he played for us in the Prem, and where I just felt like he, he just wasn't good enough. Pop it on wrists was the nickname that some people cruelly gave him, but you could understand why people were giving him that nickname. I never felt like he was good enough. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised to see him go to Birmingham City. I'm surprised to see him go to League One, if I'm honest. I think he's a decent goalkeeper for lower to mid-table championship standards, so I'm, I'm surprised one of those teams hasn't come in for him. Um, obviously, Birmingham have got big ambitions. They've got a lot of money, so maybe that was a bit of a pull for Bailey as well. But look, I, th- I think he'll go into Birmingham and I think he'll do well, probably establish his place as their number one and do quite well in League One. I think he's better than League One, so I think it'll be a, a good year for him to have a year in League One and then hopefully kick on his development after that. But he's not young anymore, is he, to be fair? Uh, I don't know exactly how old he is off the top of my head. I'll quickly just Google it. But he's not young, to be fair, anymore. 27. It's 27. Yeah, so... Not even development anymore, to be fair. But I think I think still think going to League One for a year will, will do him well. I think he'll go into League One. He'll be one of, if not the best keepers <clears throat> in League One. Apologies, I don't know all the League One keepers off the top of my head. So if there's somebody I'm obviously missing, then I apologise. But I think he goes into League One and does well and then and then plays for Birmingham in the Championship because I'm pretty certain they win League One and win it comfortably. But yeah, Bailey's another one that's, that's left Turf more, which is interesting because with all the rumours about the current keepers that we have... Um, your Traffords and your Muriches, it would have been interesting. Maybe he could have been a decent backup, who knows? Um, but yeah, it won't be because he's left. Sticking with goalkeepers, and there was a report today, sorry, yesterday in the Daily Mail uh, that Aaron Murich is set to leave Turf Moor this summer. Uh, according to them, he is being monitored by several Premier League clubs and he is expected, the word that they used, to leave Turf Moor this summer. Now, I think we need to get used to the fact that the two goalkeepers that we have or had, or still have, um, won't be here. I think when the transfer window closes, I, I think Trafford has already got his sights set on leaving with the clubs like Newcastle looking at him, although they have just signed, I think, two goalkeepers, so I can't see him going there now. But I've seen some stuff that Chelsea are looking at him as well so I think Trafford leaves how he's getting them sort of clubs looking at him I don't know I mean I do know it's because of the potential obviously but I mean he's, he's shown nothing a, a year in the championship in my opinion would be good for him but anyway that's 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 a different debate but Murich according to the Daily Mail is expected to leave Turf Moor this summer and and you know what I, I was wondering the other day because all these players are back in training but Murich just keeps posting pictures of him over in, I think it's Switzerland with his mates and stuff. So he's obviously not come back. Now, maybe the club have granted him obviously extra leave. I'm not for one second suggesting that he's, he's just refused to come back. He may well have done, but I, I do find it bizarre that he isn't back. Um, I know some of the lads um, did get extra leave because they've been on international duty. I know Trafford got a little bit of extra leave probably um, because he was out with England for a bit. So obviously he's not there anymore. So he could have come back, but because he was out for England at the start, He's probably been given an extra week or two, whereas Murich, I can't see why he, he, he would have been. But anyway, unless I've missed something and he was playing for Kosovo um, at the start of the international window. But according to the report in the Daily Mail, it says that Aaron Murich is set to leave Burnley this summer amid interest from the Premier League and abroad with fellow Clarets goalkeeper James Trafford also wanted by Newcastle. I think that last bit's a little bit out of date, as I've just said, uh, with Newcastle now signing a couple of uh, goalkeepers today. Uh, they say several Premier League clubs are interested in the Burnley goalkeeper. The 25-year-old made 55 appearances in his two seasons at Turf Moor. Uh, it goes on to say several Premier League clubs have registered an interest in Burnley's Aaron Murich with the Kosovan expected to leave Turf Moor this summer. Teams abroad are also following the goalkeeper situation and Murich wants to go in somewhere as a number one. The 24-year-old They've already scored in 25 and now they're saying 24. Which one is it, lads? Come on. Um, 24-year-old impressed when taken on from James Trafford towards the end of Burnley's fight against relegation from the Premier League. Despite two high-profile mistakes against Everton and Brighton, Muric's performances earned him a significant praise over the two months. Sorry, the last two months of the campaign in which he conceded six fewer goals than were predicted by the XG model. The Clarets rate Murich highly, but are set to respect his desire to play elsewhere next season and a move away 
could come within the next few weeks. Now, I don't think I've ever said this on one of these videos, but I have also heard that uh, from a source close to the club um, that he did want to leave and he, and he wanted to leave at the end of last season. Like he'd already made his mind up. I was hoping that maybe a change of manager would change his mind because he was treated poorly last year by our company. Let's be fair, he, he shouldn't have been dropped in the first place and then he should have been brought back in a lot earlier than what he was. Again, that's a different debate, but I was hoping that a new manager would change his mind but evidently not if this report is true he wants to leave uh, and and if he wants to leave just like Trafford allegedly does then then there's no point in keeping him as much as I like Murich and think he would be absolutely fantastic once again in the championship like he was last time we were in the championship but again he's another one still youngish for a goalkeeper kind of 25 He's probably coming into his peak now, um, so he probably wants to be playing at the highest level, and uh, and that's fair. That that's fair. I, I, I don't I don't mind that. You've got to back yourself, and and if and if he wants to play at the highest level, then so be it. But I feel like with Bailey going, and it's looking like Muirich and Trafford leaving, um, it's gonna we're gonna have to obviously bring somebody in because there's nobody left. But we. <laughs> It's going to be hard work to bring a goal a goalkeeper in when the season starts in what just over a month now, and we still don't have a manager. So it's going to be interesting. Maybe we end up keeping one of them. Who knows? But according to the Daily Mail, we won't be keeping Murich, and he is being monitored by several Premier League clubs, as I've said, and he also wants to leave. Another potential outgoing, hopefully there's some good news soon, um, is Dara Rocher, because the Daily Record, obviously a Scottish newspaper, are reporting that Celtic are interested in landing the Irish international centre-back. They say that Brendan Rodgers is keen on him and they are keen on getting the transfer done. Uh, now, for me, I can't really see this one happening. Um, it's, it's not that I don't believe the record, uh, the daily record, that that Celtic are interested in him, that they may well be. But I think Celtic's record transfer fee paid is under £10 million. Now, we paid £7 million quid for Dara. There's no way for me that he leaves for less than 10 I just can't see it. Another year of experience at the Premier League is going to bump his fee up. Whether or not you thought he was good last season or not, I personally thought he started slow, then became one of, if not the best centre-half, or one of the best centre-halves we had at, the, at, at that time at the club, because obviously Esteve was there and he's very good, and I know Jordan Bayer's obviously very good, obviously didn't play much last season. But... I think towards the end of the season, you could see that there was a player there and you could see that he's going to be very, very good for us next season in the Championship. I just can't see Celtic paying the money, if I'm being honest with you. It, it would be, I, I think, I, this might be a bit much, but I think around 15 million quid, that that would have to be the price that they were paying. That would not only be a Celtic transfer record fee paid, it would also be an SPL record transfer fee paid. And I, I just can't see him paying that sort of money. I, I think at the best... 12 million and I'd, even then I'd be a little bit annoyed but again I can't really see him paying that they don't Scottish clubs obviously Celtic and Rangers huge huge clubs uh, but the league lets them down and they don't make enough money through TV revenue and stuff like that as, as what we were doing last season in the Premier League and for the majority of our last 10 seasons in the Premier League so I can't see him paying the money that we would want to get it done now Dora may may want to play Celtic could be a pull for him obviously he's Irish uh, roots and stuff, so um, it's it, it may it, it may tug on the art strings a little bit, but even if it did, he's, he's under contract. He's our player. We're not going to let him go for anything less than what we value him at. Which obviously, like I said, we paid seven million to West Brom just a season ago. I think his value would have one hundred percent gone up. Like I said, a year playing in the Premier League and a year where he actually got better, in my opinion, in the Premier League. But yeah, I can't see it getting done if I'm being honest with you. But the report in the record says Celtic launch Dara O'Shea transfer raid. They've called it as Brendan Rodgers faces wait for Burnley decision on the Irish international. It says Celtic want to make a summer move for Burnley defender Dara O'Shea. The Scottish champions are keen to land the defender, uh, and have made an approach to the Clarets, but the move is up in the air. Uh, Brendan Rodgers wants to bring in quality that can help Celtic make an instant impact in the Champions League, and O'Shea is on his wanted list. It would take a major bid for Burnley to even consider selling as they bought O'Shea for £7 million from West Brom last year, which again is just exactly what I've just said. 
They do go on to say, though, a Burnley source has told Record Sport that O'Shea remains a major player for their club. They added that it is also unlikely any decision on Celtic's approach would be made until Burnley appoint a new manager or head coach. They have been on the lookout since Vincent Company quit, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, we're not going to sell him, in my opinion, and we're not going to sell him for any less than 10 million quid. And I think it would be a mistake to sell him. Depending on the manager, we might end up playing three at the back. And if we do end up playing three at the back, three centre-backs, obviously, then I think he would be starting most games. you got to remember as well, Bayer's not going to be ready for the start of the season, according to reports. Um, Al Dakil's injured and he'll miss the start of the season, according to reports. And who's the other one? There's another one, Ekdal, he's injured and he'll miss the start of the season, according to reports. So, again, it would be silly, in my opinion, to sell him when we have so many injuries and we'd have to go and buy a new one. And I know we are quite blessed at centre-back with some decent quality, but with the injuries, I just I just can't see us, I can't see us selling him. And like I said already, I just can't see us selling him for, for what Celtic could pay. Like I said, they are a massive club, but they're not as rich as, 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 as clubs south of the border. So, yeah, daily record, our report in that, Celtic are interested, but for me, I'll be surprised if this one gets done. Elsewhere, Burnley still don't have a manager. We don't seem to be, on the surface, any closer to appointing one. I keep thinking that you know it's going to be done soon. Obviously, Sasha, the Belgian journalist, reported last week that we were looking to appoint someone this week. But then again, there's, there's no new names coming through. I mean, I know we've said several times uh, and there's been a lot of reports several times that it's 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 going to be one of Bellamy or Parker. Um, so I, I, that's probably why there's no new names coming through if it is going to be there, uh, one of them. However, HITC have been reporting today that we are hoping to finalise a deal that will see Denmark manager Kasper Hulmund become their new head coach and apparently we are closing in on him. That's what they reported today. Uh, and in the actual report itself, which is written by Graham Daly, uh, Graham Daly, Graham Bailey, and just going back to what his quotes were when Denmark got knocked out, I don't know if I reported it uh, on this show, uh, but when Denmark got knocked out, he said um, that he has a contract at Denmark until 2026. Now, I know people will turn around and say, well, company weren't exactly saying that they were going to leave Burnley and then he left but just because companies like that doesn't mean this guy potentially is like he may well be but I don't know when I see comments like that I just think if he left two days after that to go to uh, to come to Burnley it just looked very silly just like Vincent Company did to be fair but he did look very silly um, so we'll see I think them comments to me tell me that he doesn't necessarily want to leave Denmark and wants to be there for the next couple of years and see how his contract whether they want him to or not that's another thing. But the actual report itself says that Burnley Hope Euro 2024 boss will become their new manager after Vincent Company exit. It says exclusive from Graham Bailey. Burnley are closing in on appointing their new manager having seen Vincent Company leave the club for a move to Bayern Munich this summer. The Clarets suffered relegation from the Premier League and are now preparing for life back in the Championship. The Clarets have held talk with a number of different candidates, but the likes of Frank Lampard and Ruud van Nistelrooy have turned down the chance to succeed Vincent Company, which isn't necessarily true, um, which again makes me th remind you of the disclosure saying tech HRTC with a pinch of salt. Uh, but Burnley must turn elsewhere and appear to be focusing on Euro 2024 boss. Hulman, HRTC understands that Burnley are hoping to finalise the deal for Denmark head coach Casper Hulman to take charge at Turf Moor. So we'll see what happens with that one. I would actually like Hulman, to be fair. I thought Denmark um, played okay. They were unfortunately against Germany. Um, obviously, some guy's toe was offside and then there was the very debatable handball rule. I don't even know what the handball is anymore. They've, they've made an absolute mess of that rule. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, what they do with that one but again I digress but yeah HRTC reporting that we are apparently closing in on Casper Holman but please remember take HRTC with a very big pinch of salt I think they were reporting not long ago that Lampard was due to take over and I was looking for the tweets today and they've all been deleted so um, yeah HRTC does tend to be more miss than hit but that's it from me today I say that's it it's quite a long one this one Obviously, we've had all the weekend and we've had all of Monday as well, so quite a lot to fit in. Probably the longest ever Clarets Daily News. I will try and keep them to around 10, 12 minutes in future. Um, 
but yeah, this one there was too much to fit in. But let me know what you think in the comments below about all the stuff that's been on today's show. What do you feel about Charlie Taylor leaving? Sad to see him go like I am. Or do you think the time is right? Obviously, Bailey Peacock Farrell, do you even have an opinion on that? Murich, do you think he leaves? Do you think he stays? Several Premier League clubs, do you think he wants to stay? Because, um, like I said, um, the reports are that he wants to leave. And obviously, O'Shea... Do you like me? Do you not? Do you not think that one doesn't get done? I just can't see Celtic paying it, if I'm honest. Uh, and Casper Holman as well. What do you think about that one? Let me know in the comments below, and I promise you, I'll be back tomorrow.